Thank you for the introduction, Paul, and uh, thank you all for being here. Eastern Metals is a base and precious metals explorer with two advanced projects, one in the Northern Territory and the other in the Cobalt Basin of New South Wales. So we're looking to de-risk de those projects whilst at the same time um, progress our Greenfields project in the Northern Thompson, uh, Northern, Northern part of New South Wales in the Thompson origin. So Home of Bullion and Browns Reef are two advanced projects as defined by the Valman Code. And Home of Bullion currently has a resource of 3.1 million tonnes at 2.9% copper equivalent. And the Browns Reef project is a, is a polymetallic deposit, uh, predominantly zinc, um, and we're looking to get a maiden jork resource for that um, in, in the future. And Thompson, the Thompson project is a green, greenfields um, project in the southern Thompson origin. And the way I've structured my talk today is that I'll talk about the projects in that order pretty much, so starting from most advanced down to the green fields. But first I'll talk about the corporate structure. We currently have a market cap of less than three mil. That's partly due to the fact that we only have 82 and a half million shares on issue. Um, our our board and um, management uh, have breadth and depth of experience when it comes to um, exploration, discovery, development, monetization and governance. And actually, uh, Mark Dugmore is here today. He's in the audience and will be at the booth as well. So feel free to come and say hello. Um, as, as for myself, I am a um, geologist by trade. I actually grew, grew up in a mining manufacturing town up the road on the Air Peninsula. So um, my family worked for BHP, I worked for BHP for a period of time. So the mining sector has been a big part of my life. Uh, I also should mention that about 25% of those shares uh, are held by, by board and management. Before I start talking about our projects, I thought I'd just talk about copper at a high, high level, macro level. Um, copper's traditionally been seen as a leading, lead indicator for the, for the health of the economy, but I think that's starting to change a little bit more in that we are starting to talk about copper in terms, in terms of energy. So currently today, about 22% of copper demand is used in electricity. And with, with structural changes in how we produce and consume energy, that's likely to increase. Uh, JP Morgan recently put out a report last month, actually, by Michael Sembalest. And uh, in that, the report was very much based on uh, energy consumption and remaining the same for the next two decades. And that's based on uh, historical energy use, which for the last two decades. Um, but there was a really interesting caveat in that report in that um, AI and um, data storage could, could change that quite considerably. And there are two uh, energy companies in the United States, PJM and uh, uh, Constellation, I think, and they're, they're sort of estimating that, that the AI revolution will consume a lot more energy than what they think um, yeah, the future... Um, EV fleet in the United States um, will use. So it's food for thought. So moving on to our projects, um, the, this is our tenement package in, um, in the Northern Territory. Um, they're located um, between, about halfway between Alice Springs and, um, and Tennant Creek just to the east of Barrow, Barrow Creek. So we're located between the highway, or Home of Bullion's located between the highway and the Darwin, um, Adelaide trailway, uh, railway line. We're currently focused on the northern um, group of tenements and we have Prospect D, which has got copper nickel mineralisation that's been mapped for about two kilometres two kilometre at surface. We've got Home of Bullion, of course, which has got the 3.1 million tonne uh, copper resource. And then to the west or to the northwest, we have uh, Mulbangus, a, a copper, copper prospect. This is a long section of the, um, the Homer Bullion deposit that we, that we currently have. Um, it's, it's comprised of three main, three loads, uh, upper, lower and, and south. And in 2022, 
Eastern Metals uh, drilled four diamond holes, and with that, they increased the resource by about 25%, and the contained metal by about 30%. So those those sorts of results are con uh, encouraging. It's a very yeah, it's a it's thought to be VMS, but we're we're not too sure about that at the moment. There's a bit of work needs to be done, but. Um, it's, it seems to be open uh, along strike and at depth, and preliminary metallurgical studies show um, good copper flotation. This is a highly another technical diagram. It's plan view. Uh, it's it's to show um, the it's a structural structural map uh, with the magnetics underlain. So currently. You can see where we where we know we have mineralisation in three loads, and there's an interpreted mineral horizon, um, and you can see the pink shaded areas. Uh, the, the two off to the west coincide with magnetic highs, and then the one to the east is a hinge zone. So it's thought that the the this is a highly structural. It's thought that the min uh, sulphides re remobilise and concentrate themselves in the hinge zones. This is zooming right out now. So we, this is sort of to show you the magnetic trend between uh, Homer Bullion and Mulbangus. So that that anticline is um, interpreted anticline is about nine kilometres in length. So at the moment we're in the process of getting a geophysical, structural, and resource review to generate targets uh, and along that along that trend and also design drill holes to uh, increase the resource at Homer Bullion, but also some drilling to test along, test along that, that, that trend. Um, we're also looking to prepare a jork, a jork uh, exploration target, but as a company, our aspirations are essentially to at least double the resource and prepare a scoping study within the next 12 to 18 months. Moving on now to COBA, um, and whilst Homer Bullion is very much our focus, we do have these other projects that are on the periphery. So we're keeping those ticking along at the same time because anyone who's worked in, worked in the industry knows that you need, to, you need to be agile, you need to have a few things happening at once. But um, this shows the activity of the COBA Basin at the moment, which I'm sure most of you are aware of. Um, but recently, uh, Metal Acquisition, who acquired the CSA mine in 2022 from Glencore for about 1.1 billion, they listed on the Australian Stock Exchange um, and raised about 325 mil in an over oversubscribed IPO. And not unlike Mount Isa and Kalgoorlie, uh, the Cobar Basin is probably open to consolidation. I'll, I'll take the time to mention Kingston Resources. They're currently in the process of um, recommissioning their flotation plant. Uh, we're about 100 kilometres from there. And also Peel Mining to the northwest of us. They're in the process of, um, of developing their projects. We, we're located in the Southern Coba Basin, so I'll just zoom into um, uh, Browns Reef now. So. Uh, the mineralisation is found along the Warara Fault, which is about six kilometres in length, and we are focused on two high-grade zones, Pine View and Evergreen, and between those it's about 2.7 kilometres. So I'm just going to show you a long section now. So if you're standing in Lake Kajeligo and looking to the west, this is, this is what you'll, you'll see. But the, the 2.7 um, strike length is, is comparable to um, Peel Mining's Wagga Tank, <coughs> excuse me, Southern Knights um, deposits. So, and we currently have a, an exploration target of about 27 to 37 million tonnes there at the moment. Moving on to, to our green fields, um, I'm actually quite excited by this project. So. There's been limited exploration in the uh, Thompson origin by virtue of the fact that there's deep uh, Aramanga Basin sediments. We're in the southern part of that, so where we are, the, the sediments are about 100 to 200, 100 to 200 metres, and that's made uh, any ge geochemical analysis quite, quite difficult. So it's very much, exploration is very much relied on geophysics and deep drilling. So, excuse me, our, our tenement package is located about 120 k's north of Wilcannia and about 250 kilometres northwest of Cobar. 
this is our Falca tenement. <clears throat> And there's, a, there's, there's quite a number of um, magnetic uh, anomalies, like bullseye um, magnetic anomalies that have been identified in this area, and about nine are considered to be walk-up drill targets. We've prioritised those, and we're focused on three at the moment, and I'm going to be talking about Cup B to the east there. But first, um, I'll give you a bit of a premise behind our exploration model. So on the right-hand side, we have a number of known deposits. There's, there's a few there in Cobar, uh, in, in the Cobar Basin, but there's also Olympic Dam. And our three <coughs> priorities are, located, are on the, on the right-hand side. And I guess the key takeaway here is the shape, <coughs> the size and the intensity. So this is um, Cup B, and this is, shows some geological modelling that's been done. Again, it's a highly technical um, diagram. But um, back in, about 10 years ago, Thompson Resources put in a diamond hole, um, which is thought to have skimmed the magnetic body. Um, it had some quite interesting mineralisation in, that, in that, uh, that core, and it's thought that... Um, and apparently they, they do think it's, it might be similar to the, the halo that surrounds the Allura deposit, um, which is quite a large um, deposit in, or mine, actually, in, in Cobar. So those results are very encouraging. So the investment summary, um, we have those two advanced exploration projects which we're moving towards de-risking. Um, and uh, as I mentioned before, I've, I've sort of talked a bit of, through my talk about what we're planning to do next, but we're currently doing a review of all the data for Homer Bullion um, with a view to, to drilling there. And as I mentioned, like aspirationally, we'd like to um, increase the resource and prepare a scoping study. We also have a, a highly... Um, experienced board. So thank you for your time. Come and say hello and I will leave you with a disclaimer. Thank you.